Wait a second. There's something big down there. He's out. He's out. He's right there. Right there. He's moving. He's moving. Right there. He's going through here. He's going through here. You got him. Got him! Yes! Yes! Rock formations towered like prehistoric giants as intense waves crashed upon the jagged outcrops. At high tide, the southern coastline of Africa is an unforgiving landscape that has been carved over millions of years. Yet when the tide rolls back, with it recedes the violence of the turbulent water, leaving behind an intricate catacomb of intertidal pools that are teeming with aquatic life. Today we are exploring a stretch of pristine shoreline known as Kenton on Sea. A magical place where the South Atlantic meets the Indian Ocean, and to say the least, it's breathtakingly beautiful. The sand was flawless, the waves of water were warm, and with any luck, we would happen upon and get up close with a variety of bizarre tide pool creatures. Uh, the tide is going out at this point. Looks like it's still coming in, but it's actually the best time to search for animals. When all the rocks are still saturated, that means that the animals are still comfortable, which gives us the best chance of actually catching them. The water trapped within the individual pools was crystal clear. So as I scouted from pocket to pocket, I carefully scanned the overhanging ledges and shadowy nooks. If there was ever a place for a sea beast to hide, I was determined to be the seeker. We've got a decent sized crab down here in this little rock pool. There's actually a little blenny next to it as well, which is a small little fish that'll oftentimes sit on the edges of these little cliffs. It's tempting to not go for them both at the same time. We'll see what happens. I'm really after the crab though. I'm gonna use this net because it's a deep pocket of water. Got it! Yes! Yeah. Wow, what a scoop! I almost got the blenny at the same time! All right, that's a pretty decent sized little crab right there. Look at you! Look at those distinct striped markings on the legs. Now I'm gonna actually have to look this one up in a field guide. I'm not sure exactly what species it is. Let me keep it in the net like that just for a second. Uh oh! Oh. oh. Okay! And I lost him. Hold on. Oh, I got a blenny! Two of them! Okay, game on! All right, well, Lost I... the crab, got a blenny. Oh, there's the crab. Got him! Now I've got the crab and some blennies! Wow! Hold on, that's how I got away the first time. Look at that! How's about that for cleaning up your mess? All right, well, this is really panning out well for us. Look at these guys. Come here, buddy. I got two of them in one scoop. All right, let me keep the crab underneath the net. He'll be fine. They can breathe out of water. Look at that. Those are blennies. Those are super cool. They almost look like mud skippers or like an eel type fish. Notice the elongated shape of the body. Kind of looks like a prickleback. And they do have those long dorsal ridge fins that run down the length of their backs. They actually can breathe for a short amount of time out of the water. So we don't have to worry about them just resting up on my hand. And they can actually skip from pocket of water to pocket of water. What they'll oftentimes do is exactly, oh my gosh, there's an octopus. Nobody move. That's a huge octopus. Okay, Are you sure? I'm 100% positive. Um, I'm gonna let the crab go. All right, I'm going for the octopus, guys. We're abandoning the crab. I see him. Nobody move. I can see its tentacle, Mario. If you crouch down here, you might be able to get a shot. Actually, I wonder if I can use my GoPro Wedge right into that little cavity. Can you see? Yeah. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. 
I'm gonna actually place my net up in this area, try to reach my arm around, and scare them up into the net. Now the good thing is that none of the octopus species here in South Africa are lethal to humans. Keep in mind, if we were in Australia, and that was a blue ring octopus, I would not be performing this maneuver. Now, all octopus are capable of biting, all are venomous, but hopefully this one doesn't decide to give me a nip. He's out, he's out, he's right there. He's right there. He's right here. I see him, I see him. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Dude, you see him? Where? Right there, right there, right there, right there, he's moving, he's moving. Right there, he's coming from here, he's coming from here. You got him. Got yes! it! Yes! Woo! Woo! How about that? <laughs> well, the tactic worked. Gently coaxed him out of one pocket and into the next, and there you have it. We have got ourselves an octopus. Wow! I'm gonna actually let him out of the net and onto my arm. Hopefully, I do not take a bite. There you go, buddy. Now, they do have a little beak on their underside that of course he could give me a bite with, but the venom of this species is non-lethal. This is the common octopus. They can get bigger than this, but to be honest with you guys, this is the largest octopus I have ever caught, and it is on the move. Wow, look at it just showing us its valves. Right now I'm trying to keep it as calm as I can. I don't want it to ink. And look how it's turning dark in coloration, but if I do this, check this out, set it down, and sort of try to corral it into this pool, what it wants to feel is like it's protected. Look at that color change. Within a matter of seconds, it completely morphs the shape of its body and its coloration. Got an okay shot there? Yeah. This is actually great. You can see it pumping water through the valves on the side of its head. If I keep it like this, it will feel more comfortable. They want to feel concealed. Wow, look at that. And they want to feel like they are hidden. And just like if I were to handle a snake, I wanna go one hand to the next. The octopus have eight tentacles, and one of the coolest things about these creatures is that if they lose a tentacle, they can rejuvenate it. Wow, that is so cool, like a big slimy booger. All right, I'm gonna place it back down into this pocket of water. Here we go, keep in position, and I'm getting totally slimed right now. All right, now if I just keep my hand positioned, watch the way that it will actually slink I guess it's gonna go over my arm. I thought he was gonna go under my arm. And as the tide goes out, if these animals are stuck in a shallow pool, they can do this. Slink from pocket of water to pocket of water. That is so cool. Now, one of the key defense tactics of all octopus, octopuses for plural, is that they can actually eject ink. And that allows them the ability to disappear into a rock crevice or back into the ocean waters. Now, if the octopus needs to, it can actually stay out of the water for a significant amount of time. And the only reason you'd ever find an octopus out of water is if it's moving from tide pool to tide pool. As that tide recedes, the octopus, if it's not in a deep enough pocket, will oftentimes try to find itself back out into the ocean currents. Look at that. Well, how cool was this? Exploring the tide pools of South Africa, and we managed to come across one slippery, slimy octopus. Whoa! I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. All right, buddy, time to get you back into your pocket. All right, buddy, back into your tide pool. As I released the octopus back into its watery realm, we witnessed an incredible sight. The most classic octopi defense maneuver, ink and jet. Wow! Just got ink. And as it disappeared back into the cavernous rocks, I came to the realization that never before had a single pool of ocean water provided us with so many species. This isolated miniature biome was an absolute goldmine of bizarre aquatic creatures, and I felt incredibly fortunate to have successfully gotten so many of them up close for the cameras. Yet little did we know, the adventure wasn't quite over. As we meandered our way back to the production vehicles, we stumbled upon the one creature I had always dreamed of finding in a tide pool. Oh my gosh, a shark. Oh 
my gosh, a shark. Get Mario. If you thought finding and catching a slimy octopus was cool, make sure to watch the epic conclusion to our South African tide pool adventure where I caught a shark with my bare hands. And don't forget, subscribe so you can join me and the crew on our next low tide adventure. <laughs>